The oligodynamic effect, despite its long name, is very simple. All it describes is how metal ions kill living things. That's it. Most of these are heavy metals, some less toxic than others, like tin or copper versus mercury and lead, but they all work the same way. I'm sure most people know some basic biology, but in living things, a molecule's shape controls what it does, or its job, and altering the shape alters the job. Thin copper forms an organo-copper compound, which is just another word for copper bonded to atoms which are prominently found in living things. The gist of the story is that copper changes the shape of the molecule, and thus it can't do its job anymore. Copper ions start pretty much pulling apart things as long as they can get carried by something, which really isn't hard considering our bodies are mostly water and constantly moving. These are some of the bonds which copper could form to break down proteins, like the ones in cell membranes, to open them up and make them useless. Some reasons this could become important is for lowering the chance of getting sick while in airports, hospitals, schools, or around farms or unclean places, which in turn would limit the amount of antibiotics we would use, hopefully preventing superbugs or at least the spreading of them. Just for some quick facts, scientists have found that copper kills around 99.99% of germs in just a few hours. Obviously, there is some danger with the other heavy metals that undergo this effect, especially mercury. However, copper is relatively harmless when compared with other metals. Copper is used in our bodies as a component for catalysts that have to do with skin stuff. An antioxidant help absorb iron, metabolize things. If nutrition is your thing, all you have to do is eat dark leafy greens. Our bodies also have a way to keep copper in check and maintain homeostasis, which is where zinc comes in. Your body releases zinc and it bonds with copper, neutralizing ions. I've done a lot of the boring work and figured some stuff out for about how much copper it would actually take to kill a bacteria. One of the reasons why bacteria are very susceptible to copper is because they don't have a large capacity for homeostasis, and they have proportionally larger surface contact with objects than we do. Places copper would probably help the most is at schools, hospitals, and farms, mainly because it's where a large number of people or animals are at the same time. In case of a farm, though, it would be better to prevent the occasional outbreak of E. coli and stuff you hear about on the news, and hopefully when that happens, lessen the effect and the amount of antibiotics that go into your food. For hospitals and schools, all you'd have to do is put some form of copper or alloy on railings, doors, wheelchairs, or other places people touch, and prevent the buildup of germs that would otherwise be there. Copper is also much harder to build a resistance to than antibiotics.